Hello, I'm Jean Weeb. I would like to read a bird book with you. My book says all of the things that a bird must have in order to be a bird. All birds have feathers. Even the tiniest hummingbird has more than a thousand. Birds have hard beaks that help them gather food, tidy their feathers, and build their nests. They have wings. All birds have two wings, but not all birds can fly. Two legs. Birds have two legs. Their feet usually have four toes. One usually points backward. One or more songs. All birds sing or call. Some know only one song. Others can sing dozens. Hello. Hello. I'm fine, thank you. Eggs. All birds lay eggs. Most adult birds sit on the eggs until the baby birds hatch. And warm blood. Birds have a high body temperature that remains the same no matter what the outside temperature may be. First, I want to show you from a zoo book some special things about bird bones. Here is a picture of the inside. It's a drawing of human bone compared to a drawing of the inside of bird bone. Bird bone is more hollow with little supports that go across in different directions to provide strength without providing weight. Our bones are much heavier than bird bones. Here's a picture a, a, that someone drew of bird feather parts. Here are the little spines coming down and in between are many, many, many tiny little barbs that hook together, little hook and barb systems. Whenever a bird is preening, is using his beak to pull at his feathers, he is pulling those feathers back together. If I mess up a feather and then I straighten it out again this way. Those little barbs go back together. That's what a bird is doing, is putting his feather parts back together so that they stick again together. And at the base of each feather, here's a tiny little feather. See those tiny little fluffy parts of the feathers? Those are soft, soft, downy parts that have little pockets that hold air to help the bird maintain its temperature when it's cold. A bird's wing is very special to be able to help the bird to fly. And for a long time, people tried different ways of flying ourselves and finally started studying birds and how they fly. And we can demonstrate this. If you get a little long, narrow strip of paper and just blow it like this. I'm blowing straight out and the air is pulling up the feather and that's helping to provide lift. You can do that too. I have two identical pieces of paper, same size, same weight. I'm going to fold one in thirds. I want you to see how the wide wings of eagles help them to fly because air can get underneath them. Now I'm going to drop these and we'll see which one drops the fastest. The air helped the wider piece of paper to float down. Let's do that again. Ready to drop, thin wing or wide wing? Which flies better? Wide wing. There's a lot of discussion about how birds migrate, how, how they know when to leave one place and go to another, when to leave that place and come back, or how they find their way while they're doing that. People have studied birds. They very gently put a little metal band around the bird's foot. It doesn't hurt the bird, and it's not enough weight to slow the bird down, but it has information on the little metal band. Sometimes there are even 
little electronic gizmos to help track birds. People wanted to know how birds found their way. And different people said, well, maybe they look at the stars. When the stars are in different positions, some birds do seem to change directions and make decisions differently. Some people said maybe it's because they see their way. And so they put special goggles. They made special, very light little goggles and put them on the eyes of a homing pigeon to see if that made him unable to make his trip. But the homing pigeon went right where he was intending to go anyway. Some people said sometimes maybe they depend on the magnetic system of the earth to find their way. And scientists believe that that's partly the truth. The birds evidently have at least five different ways, maybe more, of finding their way when they are migrating. Arctic terns have a tremendously long migration. From way up here in the north part of North America, way down here to the southern tip of South America, and they come back by a different path, mostly over ocean, to get back up here. And it turns out, as scientists have banded these birds and studied them, that there are more than 40 species of plants and animals and insects that depend on the Arctic tern, either to be food for them or to control their populations. Here is an article that talks about how birds sleep with one eye open. Part of their brain goes to sleep with one eye and part of their brain stays awake while the other eye is open. And when, when birds group together to do this, the birds with one eye open get on the outside with their open eye facing outward so that they can watch for enemies. And the birds make a ring around everybody else that they're helping to protect. And they switch off periodically and let the other side of their brain sleep. The birds in the center of the group go completely to sleep and sleep with both of their eyes closed and their whole brains are resting at the same time. There's a bird called an oil bird that lives in South America. This article says birds that see in the dark with their ears. This is from a National Geographic. These birds live in totally black caves. They go outside to eat fruit. But when they go home to feed their babies, they live in dark, dark caves. So there's no light. They have to be able to sense through echo where everything is. And they're able to do this and fly right to their own part of the cave where their family is and feed their babies. Another perfection in the bird world. This is the Hornbill's Walled Up Nest. This is also a National Geographic article. This is a hornbill. See his long beak? And he is carrying mud, and he and his wife have a hole chosen in a tree to be their, their home. And instead of just leaving the big open hole as a covering, they're walling up the whole opening. And then the female bird gets inside, lays her eggs. Can you see where a photographer made a hole in the back side of a tree and put a glass partition over there and then a totally black darkened tent outside that so he could watch through this window. And he watched the mother bird sit on the eggs and raise the little babies so that they were safe that way. This hornbill completely blocks up that hole to protect his family. Here is an ugly bird. Do you want him for a pet? This is called a shoebill. This is a ranger rick and the article is about ugly birds. They don't know they're ugly. They think they're beautiful. 
Aren't they interesting and all different? Birds lay eggs that hatch, and here's what is inside the egg. There's a yolk, there are some little membranes that protect, and look how thin that shell is. You've all helped crack eggs, or helped cook, or made scrambled eggs, and you've handled eggshells. The next time you have an eggshell, look at how thin the edge of the eggshell is. There is material called calcite that is in these eggshells that make them very strong for their size so that when a mother bird gets on her nest and sits on the eggs, those eggs are very able to hold her weight. And she turns the eggs and she wets the eggs down so that moisture can get in there. But these membranes keep any germs from getting in where the little baby egg, baby bird, is forming. The shell of an egg has thousands and thousands and thousands of tiny little holes. Look at it up really close. Get a little, a little magnifying glass if you can and look at it carefully. The egg looks very solid, but it's actually a mass of tiny little holes like chimneys. So that as the baby bird inside is forming, his carbon dioxide can get out and oxygen can get in. But these little membranes keep all dirt out, keep all germs out, so that the little thing that's forming inside is kept safe and healthy. Bird eggs are very special, a very excellent example of design. about all of the things that we've said about all of these different kinds of birds and think about how they developed all of these body parts, all of these special abilities. Think about how a hummingbird can actually hover, use its little wings to hover and drink nectar from the flowers. about how an owl can turn its head almost all the way around, 270 degrees out of 360. Think about all of the special ways that birds are equipped to live where they live and how they live and to get their food. These things did not happen by accident. Who designed, who thought of all of these special things, who invented a bird system that was so perfect. Only God could have done that, who knows everything and who has all power. Every time we look at an egg or watch a bird, every time you go to your library or your bookshelf and pull down a book about a bird and learn some more things about the fabulously useful and beautiful things that we can learn about birds. Think about how God made everything perfect. <laughs>